Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Following Team USA's disappointing fourth place finish at the recently concluded FIBA World Cup, Lakers superstar LeBron James is reported to be seriously considering participating in the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. According to The Athletic, which operates the sports department for the New York Times, 38-year-old James has contacted Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Jason Tatum and Draymond Green, who are all prepared to commit. But the Olympics isn't where Team USA needs to salvage pride, having won four successive gold medals, starting with the 2008 Games in Beijing. But there is a huge disparity between Team USA's performances at the Olympic Games and FIBA World Cup. Team USA have won medals in all 19 of the Olympic Games. They have qualified for including 16 gold. But of the 19 FIBA World Cups they have participated in, they have medaled in just 12 while winning only 5 gold. In fact, in the past 5 FIBA World Cups, Team USA have managed only two podium finishes. Okay, so let's take a look in 2006, third place, 2010, they were champions. In 2014, champions again, 2019, seventh place, and in 2023, fourth place. So all of this prompts the question, for a country that boasts the best league and best players, why is there a disparity in the levels of performance at the Olympics and FIBA World Cup? Well, to help us answer, we turn to our basketball expert, Alistair Albert. Good afternoon, Alistair. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. doing okay. And I hope you are as well. Thank you. So the question, the big, big question, what's the issue? <laughs> What's the issue? It's, it's a multi-layered issue with the United States, I think. Um, I, I think it was really good for you to kind of point out what that disparity is between them being a little more dominant on the Olympic side of things. But when it comes to the World Cup, they tend to kind of tail off a little bit. What I kind of realized where it's kind of concerned, I think they put a little more stock and a little more prestige and, and honor into playing for the Olympic team because, you know, I think they think it's the, the larger competition. You know, there's more athletes trying to play for the Olympics rather well, from their perception rather than the world cup uh, for fiba basketball um, and if even if you, if you just look at you know the how the teams are comprised uh of you know olympic and, and and world cup basketball the teams tend to especially the gold medal winning teams there's an average of at least seven to eight all-stars on those teams the gold medal winning, te winning teams and all the other teams who have kind of done it a bit badly from the bronze medals and worst performances, they've usually just had about three all-stars on that team. So it just means that in terms of, you know, the higher level stars from the NBA wanting to commit to play for those teams in those World Cup games, the, the commitment just isn't there. And of course, what goes into, the, into it, of, of course, is them kind of looking at, you know, body uh, and, and, and physical recovery after the NBA season, wanting to, to challenge uh, in the next season, getting into training camp he healthy and that sort of stuff. So, you know, there's probably just not that big importance for them and they value the NBA season more than, of course, the international games. So I think that's probably one of the main differences, just the commitment of the, the talent level of players coming into the teams competing in the World Cup and uh, the Olympic Games. Mm. Alistair, is there an issue as well regarding the, the rules and how the conditions of play um, are, are structured? Because the, the FIBA rules are a bit different from the NBA rules and maybe some discomfort in some of these NBA stars adjusting to the, the FIFA, FIBA guidelines? And, and yes, that's, that is true as well. You know, some of the guys, when they come into training camp, you know, uh, when the 2008 Redeem, Redeem team came, uh, came along and it was about uh, uh, Coach, uh, Mike, uh, Coach K, Mike, uh, I can't even pronounce his last name, the Duke coach, who won the gold medals in 2008 and 2012, uh, Coach K. Uh, he, he, he and Jerry Colangelo, who's the president of the USA Basketball Association, they wanted commitments from their, their members like LeBron and KD and all these guys to come in and play for multiple summers leading up to the games that they were supposed to play in to get used to playing some of those rules and, of course, develop chemistry within the, within the, the team. But like you mentioned, Lance, here, there are a, a couple of things. There's like the tangible differences. The, the court in, on, for the FIBA games is a little bit shorter. It's a 91.9 uh, feet uh, by 49 feet court. Um, uh, whereas the NBA, it's a 94 feet, 94 foot court, 
by 50, uh, uh, 50 feet uh, wide. Uh, there's a, a, a physical difference with the ball as well. I uh, haven't played with both uh, NBA basketball and, and, and molten basketball that you use over here in Europe as well. You know, you could feel the difference. You know, it's a little slicker on the, on the, the FIBA world ball, uh, the, 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 the ball that is being used for those games. And if you see your hands get a bit sweaty, the ball uh, slips out of your hands quite a lot. Uh, there's goaltending differences, which is a main, which is a, a huge one for the U.S., especially because when the ball is on, uh, in the NBA, when the ball is on its downward trajectory after a shot, you're not allowed to interfere with it, especially when it's on the rim. You have to kind of see it come off the rim to be able to rebound it. In FIBA basketball, once the ball is on the rim, you could swat it out, you could get it off the rim and everything, which incentivizes big man play. And one of the things we've seen in, in the, the FIBA World Cup over the years and in international basketball for the USA is them having to contend with, you know, bigger, stronger centers who are really skilled at getting the ball off the rim a lot quicker than they are and kind of leading to a lot of the, uh, rebounding the, uh, disparities. So these are some of the things that they have to contend with. Fouls, it's, it's five uh, fouls to be disqualified rather than six in the NBA technical fouls, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there are quite a few things, rule changes that they do actually have to really adjust to. And what Coach K was really good at doing was getting the guys to come in of multiple summers, committing to that, to try to understand the rules. So there's just no, no slippage in when they play those international players. And, and what happened with this team this year, it was a team that was assembled, assembled really quickly. It kind of felt really first come, first serve. And they didn't have an opportunity to play together and really understand the rules together a lot, a, a lot more, like the other teams who play within that system, uh, you know, most of the time. Yeah, you know, when the Paris Olympics are on next summer, uh, Alistair, which Sportsmax will be carrying live, um, LeBron will be a few months away from his 40th birthday. Um, I know whenever all of these NBA stars uh, play for the USA in the Olympic Games, they, they label the team the dream team. They, they always label it the dream team, but even more so when there is a plethora of, of numbers as far as NBA stars are concerned. Um, so what do you make of a, a, a near 40-year-old LeBron feeling enthusiastic about playing in the Olympic Games? Well, that would have seemed like a very strange thing to say at a, a 40 year. What you tend to see a lot with those guys who are really old, it's usually for the teams like uh, elsewhere in the world. Like I think it was the Iranian team this year. Yeah. Um, um, I can't remember his, his, his first name, but H Hadadi, I think is his surname, you know, recently just retired in his last game playing for Iran. And he's about 40 years old. And it's, it's Argentina. You have Luis Scola, who's played for quite a long time and retiring, you know, in his late 30s and 40s as well. It's, it's, it's teams and countries that have have to rely on very limited resources and capable, talented players, you know, to fill out their team and those who tend to have the most experience as well. For the USA, you, there's, there's a plethora of talent, like we say, but LeBron James is still playing at really high level elite, you know, basketball, you know, in, in, so far. Of course, the, the, the Olympics are a year away. We don't know what's going to happen with this season, how his body will hold up, how healthy he will be. But, you know, it's really interesting to see him wanting to rally the troops and do a little bit of le GMing, as, as you know, some people would say, you know, wanting to try to uh, assemble a team himself. It, it'll be really interesting for me to see how Grant Hill, the new president of the US, USA Basketball um, uh, Association, kind of deals with that, because I think Grant Hill will want to kind of put his stamp on this team rather than LeBron doing his usual thing <laughs> of picking his all-stars to represent the team that he's on. What's for sure, Alistair, is it will be good fun for us to watch because we love basketball. But for the teams that go up against this star-studded cast, of course, if it comes to pass, it'll be dangerous for them. Oh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, be crazy. And, you know, they're even trying to um, um, uh, recruit Joel Embiid, who is from Cameroon, <laughs> who has French citizenship as well. So, you know, if this team comes together with the size and the talent that they're going to have the all-star level play, you know, like we said, you know, if you have at least seven to eight all-stars in a team, they usually tend to win. So um, if, if they could assemble that cast, it would be a very, you know, a hard uh, fight for the rest of the world. Yeah, well, Alistair, as always, we enjoy chatting with you. NBA will be here soon, and of course, it lives on the home of champions. So we, you'll be back on as regular as you normally do. That's it. That's it. See you guys soon. Yeah, chat soon. Thank you so much. All right, it's break time on the Sports Max Zone.